Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining today's Residio webinar session, where we are going to talk about forest air zoning. My name is Fatima Guevara, and I am part of the Residio training team. And on behalf of all of us, I'd like to welcome you to our training session today. This training today is very interactive as we will share some new features that are going to allow our attendees to interact with us as we walk through our forest air zoning presentation. So thank you for making time to be with us today. Before we get started with our technical presentation, I'm going to cover a few items. Information on our upcoming webinar sessions are posted on our website at residio.com backslash webinars. You can find upcoming webinars by searching under the Discipline tab by the title HVAC or Plumbing on the left-hand side of the search bar, so be sure to register. You can find the recorded webinar sessions on this same website by selecting On Demand on the right-hand side of these filters. For those contractors joining us for today's live session and you are interested in earning one NAID Continuing Education credit, there are a few things to know. If you provided your NAID ID on your registration form, we will submit those details to NAID. And we don't need any additional information from you at this time. If you did not provide us with your NAID ID on the registration form for this webinar, and you would like to receive credit for attending our live session, then we ask you to email your first name, last name, NAID ID, and the date of the session you attended to homes.university at residio.com within one week from today. This information is submitted to Nate one week following the close of each session. Any requests sent outside of one week from this live training cannot be processed. As a reminder, we can only process requests for Nate credits when you attend the live webinar sessions. And we are unable to process requests for watching a recorded version of the training. If you would like more information about the NAID program, please visit their website at www.nadex.org. One quick note before we begin the technical presentation. All attendees are muted. However, if at any point during the technical presentation you would like to ask a question, please use the Q&A feature found in your Zoom webinar controls. We are reserving the last few minutes of our time today to answer your questions. So as we progress through the technical training today, please be sure to ask your questions in the Q&A feature so we can address it at the end of today's session. Before I turn the presentation over to our trainer, I wanted to remind you all that we have added some polling features into the presentation and we would like for you to participate. I will put a link in the chat for all of you. Make sure to open the link in the new browser window or you can even open it on your phone. There will be indicators throughout our session today where our presenter is going to ask for your feedback. So pay attention for those instructions so you can participate. So now we're going to turn things over to the present, uh, sorry. So now we're going to turn over the presentation to Isaac Rovner, who is part of our technical support team. Isaac is going to be sharing his knowledge of the forced air zoning portfolio today. So Isaac, we're going to turn things over to you. All right, thank you, Fatima, and thank you, everybody, on behalf of the entire Residio team for joining us today here. Again, my name is Isaac Rovner. I'm a technical trainer based out of our Golden Valley um, location here in Minnesota. As you can see behind me, um, a few of our thermostats of many that we have and some of our products that we support today. Today, we're going to be talking about forest air zoning. Now, this is a definitely a, a product catalog and, and family that I'm very passionate about because of just really how well it works. Um, when you think about Residio and Forest Air Zoning, we think easy to wire, easy to set up, you know, very intuitive products. So they're definitely something that can be really fun to support and to use. Today, we're gonna cover a little bit about our panels, kind of a brief overview of what panels we have in our family. We're gonna talk about our true zone dampers, as well as our bypass dampers. We're gonna talk about some red link solutions. And at the end, we're gonna talk about some common topics that we see here in technical support. All right. So when we look at a home, you know, we say here, this is the typical residio home. See here that we have three different zones. 
controlled by a residio zone panel. Now, depending on the house, the type of house, the size, and the customer needs, it might look a little bit different, or it might look similar to this. This house we can see here, we have two zones on the second floor, which are controlled by Focus Pro thermostats, which are our more basic models here. We have our Prestige used for the main control. You know, something a little bit um, more robust with some extra features such as IEQ, which is gonna give us a little bit more um, when it comes to our comfort needs. Outside the house, you can see here, we have an outdoor air sensor. For example, if we're using a heat pump and we need a control for lockouts, um, we can easily just add that in without running any wires. So when it comes to the home, we have you covered really with, with any product um, you know, that's gonna fit your customer's need. So what do you consider when you're looking at the typical home that we're gonna zone out, right? Well, some things that we wanna consider is to definitely divide the zones into day or night or upstairs, downstairs, which is very common. We can group zones by load, but one thing we want to make sure to do is avoid the small zones. Use a two-stage HVAC equipment if zones are less than 25% in, in size and loads, load, if possible. And that kind of just gives you kind of a rough idea on you know, how to get thinking and how to get started when we're considering a Residio Honeywell Home zoning application. So. Let's break that down a little bit, right? When you think about a zone system, there's a few components. We have the control, which is our thermostat, and we may have some accessories that are added into that ecosystem as well, such as wireless sensors, um, a red link internet gateway if you're using a red link product, a wireless control, indoor sensors, outdoor sensors, you name it. There's a lot we can add in here, but what we do need is a, is a control, and that can be either a basic thermostat or more advanced smart thermostat. We have our zone panel, which is gonna be kind of like the brains of the operation, right? Our zone dampers, and we can either have a few or a handful, and a bypass damper as well, which is recommended in most zoned applications. Take a look at our family. So really we have a product that's gonna fit every application, whether using a heat pump with or without backup or a multi-stage conventional system. We have our HZ221, our HZ311, our HZ322, and our HZ432. Now I just threw a lot of numbers at you. And this is probably, at least for me, when I was kind of learning these products, so many numbers, it was reminding me of, you know, high school algebra, um, but don't worry. We can kind of simplify this. Now, all you have to remember is that first number after the HZ, so HZ stands for Honeywell zone, right? The first number is gonna indicate the number of zones that panel is capable of. So for example, the HZ322 is capable of controlling up to three zones, while the HZ432 can do up to four zones, pretty easy. Our second digit there, uh, the two, let's take for example, the HC322 again, that second digit is gonna be the number of heat stages. And the third is gonna be the number of cooling stages. So if you can remember that you're all set, but hey, if not, we're here to help. And within the literature and on our website, it's gonna clearly label and provide the specs. Um, so you know, you'll, you'll know exactly what panel you need for the job. Let's take a closer look though, right? Here we have our thermostat terminals. And these are all dry contacts, meaning there's no voltage going out. You can easily wire in, you know, a, a smart thermostat since we have the C common terminal there. Um, you know, we have all our required terminals ready to go. Our DATS connection, which is gonna be used for our discharge air temperature sensors our ABCD terminals at the bottom left, which is gonna be used for our wireless control. And then our damper wiring, which you can see here attached to each thermostat. So the damper is gonna be clearly labeled. For, for example, this is zone one. 
So this is zone one damper and zone one thermostat here in the top right. We're gonna group those together and we'll wire the damper to whatever thermostat we'd like to control for that particular zone. Now we can wire M1, M4, M6. Typically our dampers are um, spring open, power closed, but some of our products allows you to modify that if you'd like it, um, you know, power open, spring closed, or power open, power closed. So you do have some flexibility there. What's not pictured here, um, or what is not enlarged, I should say, is our equipment wiring. And our equipment wiring is gonna be right here on the left side, where that gray terminal box is. And that's where you're gonna wire the HVAC equipment to. Let's take a closer look though. So remember, HZ221, now if we remember that nomenclature, that can do two zones, two heat, one cool, and that's for heat pumps with backup auxiliary heat. So this is gonna be the model if you're using a, um, a two zone, you know, you have a two zone system that uses a heat pump with backup heat. This one is not designed for conventional systems. However, our HZ311, which is a three zone system, one heat, one cool, is used for conventional forest air equipment. Now let's take a look at our little, uh, at our kind of more robust products, right? Our HC322 and our HC422. Now our HC322, again, three zones, two heat, two cool. And our HC432, four zones, three heat, two cool. The important difference here is, of course, you will get an extra zone with the HC432. But the main difference that I would like to emphasize is the HC432 is our only zone panel that's compatible with dual fuel. So if you do have a dual fuel application, meaning you have gas backup on your heat pump, you're gonna to wanna to go with that guy there. Now, if you're using electric backup, you have a little bit more options to pick from. These models are really nice because they have that on, on onboard um, display, which you can easily see kind of what's going on here. So in addition to the lights that show you the equipment status, you can easily configure it right from the zone panel, customize certain parameters, and easily test the system all from the panel. So I got a question here today for you guys. Um, again, as we mentioned, we do have some in more interactive features here, which is our pole EV. Um, and I have a question for you guys, and that is what true zone panel would you likely use in your next job? Now that link should be in the chat. So if you, if you're not sure how to get there, just click that link that should bring you to a browser page where you can, um, submit your responses. You can also do this from your mobile phone. So I see a couple responses here for HC 432 and Hey, I mean, if I was, you know, uh, picking my panel for my next job, that, that might be the go-to because really that's gonna have a lot of functionality there. HZ322, good choice as well. You know, these two are kind of interchangeable. A big difference again, like I talked about was the dual fuel. So that might be the deciding factor for those two. Not a lot of hits on our HZ221, I'm sorry, HZ211 and our HZ311. That's okay. Um, you know, those options are gonna be great if, you know, we're trying to be a little bit more budget conscious. You know, those are um, gonna, you know, not do as much as far as um, customization, but they're still gonna get the job done and they're gonna still provide that reliability that you're looking for. Awesome, thank you for your responses there. Let me test your knowledge one time here though here before we continue. Um, what panel is compatible with dual fuel? Now I'm just, you know, bringing this up again and I'm kind of hitting, you know, the hammer against the wall here, but it's important because, you know, right now it's November, tomorrow will be well into heating season here. And it's a question that we get a lot on the technical line. You know, we're using backup heat during these winter months in a lot of, you know, many regions of the states here. Um, so it's important to make sure that we have the right panel for the job. Great. And I can see that you guys are skilled 
already. I see the majority of the responses here for the HC432, which is the correct answer. Um, thanks. Thanks for your responses there. Let's move on. So we talked about our zone products, I'm sorry, our zone panels and the family there and kind of what panel you need for what job. Let's talk about what actually makes that system work, our zone and bypass dampers. So here I pictured a couple of our dampers here. Um, on the right is our bypass damper. Um, some of our dampers can be used as nor, you know, regular dampers or bypass. Um, and we really have a damper to fit really any, any need or any job. Now, if we just run through a breakdown here, I have the model number on the left. So for example, our ARD damper is typically used in residential new construction. It's our round damper. Our ZD is our rectangular residential damper, also used in new constructions, but sometimes um, added later on. Our RED, or I'm sorry, our RD, which is our round retrofit, which is used for retrofit jobs. And those are great. You just pop them up and they fit right in the duck to give you uh, that, the ability to create a zone for that particular space. Our MARD, which is another round zone or bypass damper. So it can be used as either one and that's used in residential or light commercial. And then we have, lastly, we have our CPRD, which is our round residential bypass. And you'll see here too, that on the right, all these come in different sizes. So we really, we should have a size that will fit your needs there, whether it's, you know, nine inches or 14. Um, these are available in different sizes. And all this information, again, is available on our website, um, residio.com backslash pro. So how do you size your zone dampers, right? Well, what we're gonna do is we'll take the max per zone, max per panel, and we'll wanna look at the, what, what type of transformer we need. So if we're using, for example, an ARD or ZD, 40 VA transformer, we can go up to four per zone, five per panel. So, you know, some zones might have multiple, um, might have multiple dampers, other zones might just have one. So you can just easily just reference the size in here. You know, in some cases we see where typically um, a lot of homes just have one damper per small zone, but some of the larger zones will have multiple dampers on them. And yeah, you know, again, all this information can be easily referenced in our literature as well. So it's not something that we expect you guys to remember. What about bypass damper sizing? Now, this is a call that we do get quite often. Um, and when we get this call, usually we don't hear from that customer again, because once you learn how to do this, it's actually pretty, sim pretty simple. Um, so we want to figure out what size bypass damper we're going to use, right? We're going to take the total CFM minus the CFM in the smallest zone, and that's going to equal what bypass we need by telling us the amount of CFM. So for example, look at example one here, 2000 CFM. We're gonna minus the smallest zone, which is 600 CFM. That's gonna give us 1400. Now, since we have 1400 CFM, we wanna find one of the models that's gonna work for that. So in this case, we could do the 12, um, or you know, if we're not sure it might be a little bit bigger, we can move up to the CPRD 14 which I know some techs will do. If you're not sure, um, you know, consult with your, um, you know, consult with, uh, you know, the needs of the homeowner to make sure, you know, what, what sizing we're taking account for, whether it's condition zones or non-condition zones and all that stuff. Um, and if you need help, you know, we're always happy to help you as well. Where do we install the bypass damper? So we should mount the true zone bypass on the supply duct or in a bypass loop. It can be installed convenient, conveniently at any angle. The most important thing is that we wanna make sure the bypass um, supply should be before the first damper. 
it should also be, um, you know, the return should be um, six inches below from the boiler, um, blower, I'm sorry. Here you can also kind of see, it's cool, we can see where we typically place the discharge air sensor, which is shown in the bottom right, um, which is good for reference there as well. So what type of residual dampers are you likely to use on your next job? Is it gonna be the round? Is it gonna be the rectangular? Okay, I got some, I got some uh, responses here for the rectangular. You know, maybe we're thinking more new construction. Um, maybe your market doesn't have as much new construction. We're looking at maybe the retrofit. So really, I mean, it really just depends on, you know, what type of job we're, we're looking at there. Great. I really appreciate these responses here. It's kind of, it's really interesting to see, you know, um, kind of what you guys are thinking and what, you know, when you're thinking ahead, you know, it's a good idea to get, you know, uh, familiar with the products that, that you might be using. So great. Thank you. Wireless solutions. So we talked a little bit about our families. We talked about our zone dampers and bypasses. Let's talk about wireless. We know that wireless is the future, right? You know, um, especially when it comes to anything connected or in an age of connectivity. So when we think about wireless, usually we're thinking about smartphones, remote access and stuff like that. When it comes to zoning, we talk about wireless. We're thinking more about not having to run the wires through the wall, right? We're thinking about not having to open up that drywall and run a new wire line um, down to the basement or into the attic. So with our wireless solutions, we can prevent some of those headaches there. Here we have our Red Link, some of our Red Link uh, products here. We have our Prestige IAQ touchscreen color thermostat. We have our Red Link internet gateway, which is on the left, which is gonna give us remote connectivity. We have our equipment interface module right in the middle there. And then some of our sensors on the right. We do have some other Red Link products here that are not pictured. Red Link is a really exciting um, you know, product line to get into. And it's something that has been here for a while and you know, that we know that works. And we're still developing new products such as our Red Link 3.0 wireless indoor temperature sensor and motion detection that's used with our T10 thermostat and our T9s. So Red Link is constantly evolving, but you, know, you have that great base there that's been there for a while that we know that works well, right? So typical Red Link solution. Um, here we have some wireless Focus Pro thermostats, a true zone panel, and a wireless adapter. Now we can either use the wireless adapter or we can use an equipment interface module, an EIM, and wire that to the equipment side, or I'm sorry, the thermostat side of the zone panel. Here we have two wireless thermostats. And just note, you know, we can mix and match. Some can be wireless, some can be wired. You have the option to select which zones you want wired which zones you want wireless very easily. So, like I said, we can get wireless capability two ways, right? We can use a equipment interface module or we can use the wireless adapter. Here I'm gonna show you the equipment interface module. So this is gonna show you the wiring on the equipment interface module and the wiring on the zone panel. We're gonna connect the zone panel wiring to the thermostat side of the panel. Wireless adapter, um, really easy, right? Four wires, A, B, C, D. Wire that directly to the wireless terminals on the zone panel to enable wireless capability for each zone. And then, when you go into the installation and to the on-screen setup, you can select what zones you'd like wireless. So for example, I want zone one to be wired, zone two and three to be wireless, zone four, wired. So you really have that capability there. One thing to note, and I should just rewind just for a second, if we are using that equipment interface module, we're gonna need one equipment interface module per zone. However, if we are using the equipment interface module, we'll just note, you might have a few more features there 
as um, we have the ability to do a little bit more with the equipment interface module. Both our wireless adapter and our equipment interface module are gonna work with the Redlink internet gateway. So if your customer is looking for remote access using our app, um, either one is gonna give them that option. One difference we could say here is possibly like our indoor um, Redlink 2.0 wireless sensor. That one's not gonna work with, the, um, with our wireless adapter. So if you are using wireless indoor sensors that are the 2.0s, we would recommend using the EIM for that particular zone or zones. So that kind of concludes the wireless bit there. Um, let's talk about some common topics, right? You know, we see a lot of interesting things that come into technical support and I won't, um, you know, I, I, could, I could probably get a couple laughs here on some of the unique calls that we get, but let's go into the more common stuff, right? What do we hear a lot about? Well, a big driver that we see here is powering true zone. And it's not just how do I power true zone, but sometimes there can be some complications that can arise if we're not getting the correct power to that equipment. So again, like I mentioned earlier, the equipment terminals are dry contacts. The panel closes these switch, switches with a call for heat or cool, meaning they don't output any voltage. We do recommend that we have a dedicated transformer. Best install practices say that we should be utilizing this. Um, if something's not working, which, you know, people don't call us when everything's working. I'd love to hear from some of our customers when it's working, but people usually call us when something's going wrong, right? And if there are any power issues or some type of switching issues, the first thing that we're going to recommend is adding a dedicated transformer. Eight out of 10, that's going to resolve it from our experience. It's one of the main driving factors for a resolution is adding an external transformer, or I'm sorry, a dedicated transformer if one is not already installed. That can definitely cause you some headaches if you don't have a dedicated transformer, but um, again, it's not essentially required. It's just something that we really strongly recommend. True zone of smart thermostat. So this is a call we get Oh, as well, you know, some, some of our uh, technicians in the field work with, you know, Honeywell zone panels and non Honeywell branded thermostats. Um, we know that smart thermostats are definitely a common call that we, we hear a lot about, right? What smart thermostats best for me? What do I need for a smart thermostat? Um, can I use this smart thermostat with this type of system? Now we know that you know, we always recommend the Honeywell Home Choice, right? Our products are designed to work together in a robust way. So if, if we're able to, always recommend using Honeywell Home thermostat when you're thinking about a smart thermostat. Now we have really a lot to choose from. More economy models, which are more basic, non-color touchscreen products, such as our 6000 Wi-Fi, um, our T5, in our T6. We also have, um, you know, our more advanced model, like our T10 pictured below there, which can connect to those Redlink 3.0 sensors and really gives you a lot of, lot of features there, including HomeKit, Alexa, all that good stuff. So that's pretty cool. One thing to consider when you're working with a customer saying, you know, what other devices do you have in your house? Are you an Apple user or an Android? Maybe a mix of both. Maybe they're using Alexa. Maybe they're using Google Home. The good thing to note there is all of our smart thermostats are compatible with Alexa and Google Home. However, certain models are only compatible with HomeKit. So if they are using Apple HomeKit, um, might be important to take a little bit closer look at that thermostat that you'd like for that application. One thing to consider here too with non-branded Honeywell thermostats, the generation, right? We know that some of the non Honeywell thermostat branded models may work better than others, depending on what generation they are. And also one thing to consider is the wiring. So if you're using conventional wiring, typically you should be okay. But we know that some of our, um, you know, some other of our um, smart thermostats that we see in the field may use um, proprietary wiring uh, or, you know, wiring that doesn't exactly match up to ours. 
So that is something to take a look for there. Lastly, the C wire. We want to make sure that we do have a common C wire, regardless of what brand thermostat that we're using. So what smart thermostat are you going to use on your next install? You know, could it be a Honeywell Home? Would it be a, a non-Honeywell Home thermostat? Are you going to use non-connected? Are you going to use a mix? So a lot of times we do see the mix where, you know, it might not make sense to have that really nice, you know, touchscreen Wi-Fi thermostat in the basement, right? We can maybe do a mechanical thermostat or a simple digital one. But the thermostat that we use most often in the family room, maybe we do want to use a T9 or T10. So you really just got to you know, think about the, the, you know, the needs for each customer there. I'm glad to see a lot of you know, um, you know, responses showing Honeywell Home Thermostat, something I have in my house, something I have in my parents' house, my family, products that we love, products that work well. Um, and you know, if, if there are any hiccups, you know, of course, you know, I, I'm not going to sit here and pretend that there's no hiccups in the connected world, right? Because when we talk about clouds and, and connectivity, we know that sometimes there can be some challenges there, but our teams are dedicated to making these products better every day, which is pretty cool. And I, I meet with some of these guys personally, and we give feedback directly to them to make sure our connected products are working the way that we expect. Great. Thanks for your responses there. Really cool to see kind of what you guys are thinking about here. One of the more final things I'll kind of talk about here is checkout and DATS. So this gives us the ability if we're using the HZ3, um, 322 or 432 panel, one of the panels with the on-screen LED screen there, um, to easily check each stage of heat and each damper. So we can open and close the damper right from the panel. You can also test the stage of heat easily right at the panel as well. So I remember I was listening to a call last week and um, the customer was yelling, the, the, the technician was yelling back and forth to the customer, hey, uh, turn up the heat on zone two. So he'd run around, turn up the heat, and then he would verify the damper operation and the operation at the zone panel by yelling back and forth. Don't have to do that anymore. Luckily with our new zone panels, this checkout mode allows us to check everything from the panel without having to run around the house. Um, so yeah, really easy to test each damper, each stage of heat and each zone. Let's talk a little bit about DATS next. So DATS, again, that's going to be our discharge air temperature sensor. It's going to be used to prevent, um, the system going on high limit or your coil freezing up. It is adjustable on the HC322 and 432 panels. On our other panels, HC221 and 311, there are going to be fixed limits for that um, product there. The suggested settings is about 15 degrees Fahrenheit below the equipment high limit. However, we understand that each application is different, so we'll leave it up to you to make that selection there. But again, we're going to have a little bit more capability on our um, HC222 and 432 panels. So Again, those will allow us to actually customize the, those limits there, which is pretty cool. Let me test your knowledge. You can set custom DATs on true zone. True or false? I got some for true, okay. All right. Got a couple more responses in, great. Yeah, so I mean, I think we're we're pretty much all in agreement there, right? We know um, it's true, right? But there's that one kind of minor thing that we want to talk about there is just, again, it's only going to be on the HC322 and the HC432. So you can set them on true zone, but just make sure that we do have the right true zone panel um, if we want to do those custom limits. Where does the DATs get installed? So you can see here it's above, um, you can see here it's uh, downstream of the furnace and the cooling coil, and it's going to be be before the first damper. Again, this is just going to prevent freeze up or high limit trips.
and these just pop right in, um, wire them directly to the zone panel and you are good to go. One of the more final things we'll talk about here is a size and review. So remember, um, you know, some zoning applications require more than one damper per zone. So to determine the num maximum number of dampers per zone, what we're gonna do is just simply divide the VA of the damper actuator by 28.8 .8 VA. Um, and that's gonna give you the size that you need there. To size the system transformer, what you're gonna do is just add the VA of all the dampers and the panel in order to figure out the amp draw. Now, most likely you're not gonna have all dampers opening and closing at the same time, but that will give you an idea of the size of the transformer that you're gonna need for that job. You can also make zones larger using our SDCR. Um, so that, you know, that can control up to four dampers, um, uh, nine with a 75 volt transformer, um, which is also, you know, a great product to use there um, if needed. All right, and we will open it up for Q&A if there's any questions there. Thank you, Isaac, for walking us through this presentation training today. If you are interested in finding more information about the products and accessories covered today, you can find that information on the new Residio Pro website. As a quick reminder, if you have questions on what was reviewed today, please take a few moments and enter that information into the Q&A future in your Zoom controls, and we will do our best to address your questions in the time we have remaining. Now we're going to transition to answer some of your questions that were posted during the training session. Um, here we have two questions. Uh, the number one is looking for help in wiring for a specific scenario. Three zones with two thermostats with no humidity control one thermostat with humidity control, but we want humidity delivered to all zones. How do, how do you wire? The R and C power terminals are isolated from the equipment. R and C terminals and allows for a separate transformer, or can we use the transformer from the furnace in the VA rating is high enough for the application? Great question. So yeah, there's a couple it's kind of complex there and something that we, you know, we might need a little bit more information to really give you the best recommendation. IAQ with zoning can be difficult, right? Because, you know, you want to deliver, you know, essentially it, it really depends more on how your um, dampers are controlled. Are they set up to be spring open power close or power close spring open? So in that case, we'd probably want to need to make sure that um, all of our dampers are in the standard state closed and whatever damper we're calling for opens. Um, so kind of to, to more answer that question though, um, we could use you know, a smart thermostat like a prestige IQ um, device um, or maybe like a 8,000 model, wire the IQ directly to that um, and, and have the control there. And then, you know, it's just about, I guess, positioning the dampers in the correct orientation um, to make sure that we're not um, humidifying zones that are not needed um, to be humidified. You know, I think too, if, you know, hopefully that helps a little bit, um, might need a little bit more information if we are able to kind of assist a little bit more there, um, certainly would recommend giving us a call. We'd be happy to take a look at the entire application as a whole and give you a little bit more detailed information there. Great, thank you, Isaac. Also, how many wireless adapters are allowed? Uh, I'm sorry, wireless adapter allows how many wireless thermostats? So it's the wireless adapter just makes the zone panel wireless. So it's really how many zones can the thermostat, can the panel control? So for example, our HZ322, you would have up to three wireless zones. Or HC432, you'd have up to four wireless zones. You're only using one wireless adapter per zone panel, and that's gonna allow you to make the whole panel wireless or select zones on it wireless as well. So uh, hopefully that will answer your question there. Thank you again, Isaac, for answering those questions. Great. And Thank those you. are all of the questions that we have. 
All right. Well, you know, if there are additional questions or you think of something later on, we're always here to help. We have two teams located in San Luis Potosi, Mexico and Golden Valley, Minnesota. These are our pro comfort technical support teams, our level two teams that support technicians in the field. And I can say that personally, having trained some of them, having to work with them daily here, these guys are highly skilled, ready to help. Um, so if you do need any assistance, reach out to us. You can also visit us at customer.residio.com or residio.com backslash pro. You can also call us at 1-800-468-1502 Monday through Friday, and we're happy to answer your questions there. Again, um, thanks for joining us here. Uh, we really appreciate your time, and it's been a pleasure. Thank you, Isaac, for providing another great training today. If you think of a question after the close of this training, please reach out to your local Residio sales rep or send an email to homes.university at residio.com and we will make sure to get your questions answered. Training is something we are very passionate about at Residio and we want to make sure that you have access to more in-depth trainings on our products. Inside of our online learning platform, you will be able to find many in-depth technical and sales trainings. You can access this online training catalog by visiting the training page on our Residio Pro website. The first time you access the online training catalog, you will be asked to create an account. And going forward, you will log in into your account to access this training. Currently, we have about 20 online learning modules available, including several modules on our humidification portfolio, the T10 thermostat and the Prestige IEQ thermostat. These online trainings cover everything from technical and installation details and, and shows you how to identify the right customer and sell these products. We're very excited to add this online training catalog to our training offerings for all of you. If you're interested in more in-depth trainings, we encourage you to sign up for the Residio Pro Portal account to access these trainings. Also, if you are a Residio Perks member, you will receive training credit when you enroll and take this online trainings as well. To find out more information about our upcoming webinar sessions, please visit residio.com backslash webinars. And if you search by the H, if you search by HVAC or plumbing tabs, you will find the details for our upcoming session. Additionally, we record each of these sessions and you can find those recordings on this same website by filtering for webinars with the label on demand. One last reminder for those contractors who did not include your NAT ID on your registration form and you would like to receive credit for today's session, please send an email with your first name, last name, your NAT ID number, and the date of the session you attended to homes.university at residio.com within one week of today's live webinar to receive credit for attending this live training. Once our training session ends today, you will be prompted to complete a survey regarding our webinar session. Please take a few moments to provide us with your feedback on the training you participated in today. We are very interested in your feedback on today's session, and we use your feedback to help us create future trainings. So your feedback is important. Finally, you will receive an email from us in a couple of days with some follow-up information on the products we reviewed today as well as the link to the website for the information on our future webinars. Make sure to join us next week on Tuesday, December the 7th at 2 p.m. Central for our next training session on Universal Parts Strategy and Source Training Preview. Thank you all for joining today's Residio webinar session. Have a great day, everyone.